we got a little hands-on with Dragon's Prophet, and it seems pretty fleshed out. What are the biggest things that you guys are going to be adding to the game before an official release? So what we're continuing to work on right now is the housing area. Mm-hmm. So the frontier system, uh, where, you're, where you can purchase housing lot uh, and do a lot of work up there. That's what we're working on right now, as well as some of our instance scenarios. And so you can solo instances with three different difficulties. Uh, we're still working on tuning the difficulty. We're still working on making sure that it's good for groups as well as solo players. So really a lot of tuning the balance is, is what we're working on right now. Okay, and you said that the that the game could be played either solo or with a group. Yeah. What do you think are the advantages of playing with a, like a guild or doing quests with a bunch of your friends? Well, one of the obvious advantages is you can get your content faster. Um, if you do it right and you guys are you know playing the right way, you can actually level up a little bit faster because you can take on more mobs, complete more quests. A lot of the experience you get from the game is doing quests. Mm-hmm. So the faster you can progress your quest, the better. Um, but you know, it, it has to be a good group dynamic, like mm-hmm. like you know anything. You have to really work well together, not have someone run off and mm-hmm. keep dying over and over and having to rescue. Them. Yeah. So can you create your own guild, or do you have to be yep. invited? You is can. there a level cap for creating yep. a guild? Uh, it's a really open system. Again, the, the premise of the game is you go out there and do what you want to do. So you can create the guild, you can join a guild. Uh, there's different levels within a guild. So if you are the owner of a guild, you can set different levels for the other people that join your guild. Mm-hmm. Uh, kind of a way to earn your way up the ranks. Mm-hmm. Sort of. So yeah, it's really anything you want to do, you can. And what was, what was the challenge of um, balancing a free-to-play game like this um, for for people who don't want to spend money and people who do? How do you balance how quickly people can progress and things like that? Very carefully. <laughs> that, that's a really good question because that is one of the other things that we're really trying to work on is, mm-hmm. is balancing. So nobody wants to uh, pay to get more powerful. Mm-hmm. So what we're really trying to do is allow you to pay to do things faster, mm-hmm. to do things a little more conveniently. So right now you can everyone can tame dragons. Everyone has a, a limited number of slots in their inventory and in their bank or the dragons. If you want more dragon slots, if you want more bank slots, bank slots, then you have to pay. Um, same thing with crafting, uh, sending your dragons out to harvest resources. Everyone can do it. Uh, what you need to do is if you want to do it a little bit faster, gather a few more resources at one time, you can pay with in-game currency or with our station cash, our real-world currency. And to gather in-game currency, it takes more time. Yeah. Right? So it's really up to how you want to play. So it's just balancing that to make it feel like, hey, everyone can do it. How fast do you want to do it? How fast do you want to go through the game? Are there any additional unlockable items that can't be unlocked with in-game currency well, and that you have to purchase? We will have a marketplace. We will have a marketplace with uh, some unique items that are cosmetic, so how they look, you know, the things that go in your house that you can only buy with uh, real-world currency. Okay. Uh, but, you know, again, the game is very playable all the way through. You can have a lot of fun without paying. So. Okay. We and try to make it appeal to both players. For the marketplace, how does that work? People can generate their own custom items and craft things for other players. And is there like a rev share program with the game, or how does that work? Well, the the marketplace is uh, tra- microtransactions only straight from okay. stuff that we've created. There is an auction house. Yes. That's things you know you can put on sale. Things that you found in the world. Things that you've crafted. Um, and that's just handled straight through the game client. Okay, so they sell it directly for in-game currency. in-game currency. That's okay, right. cool. Awesome. Yeah. And, uh, let's see. and again, you know, part of that crafting system is based on what you're deciding to do and how fast you want to get it done. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's it's a whole economy, micro economy within the game is really what we're looking for. Um, what were some of the technical challenges of creating such an open world and a game with so many features? Well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's what we're going through right now. So right now we've just started closed beta mm-hmm. and we're, you know, we're trying to figure out, you know, the game's really beautiful, so it's a little bit intense on the ground. So we're trying to figure out, like, what's the threshold of people we can have in one area? How many people can be on the server? We want to make sure that there's no latency issues because, you know, you're, this is a very active combat system where you're, you're, you know, you're clicking buttons and using your abilities. You, you know, you're not just hitting auto attack and sitting back. You're, you're actively involved. So we want to really test the load, test the latency, test how animations are going. So it's a challenge to make the game beautiful and responsible. But, yeah, and that's why we have closed beta. That's what, you know, that's what it's here for. And is there going to be, like, a schedule? scheduled um, time every month or something where there will be more content released like new dragons, new armor things uh, like that. We don't have a preset schedule for that but certainly throughout closed beta we'll be introducing so right now our plan in closed beta is we're 
going to be focusing on playing during the weekends, mm -hmm. then doing some development, testing and updating on the server on, during the week while it's closed, uh, and then presenting new content on the weekends. So as we get the new content ready for players to experience, we'll send it out there. Awesome. And what I mean ready to experience, ready for them to help us test. Yes. Ready definitely. to check it out and see what cool. everyone thinks. Um, so where can everybody uh, check out Dragon's Profit and keep up with the news? Sure. Uh, Dragon's Profit the game. Dot com is our website. Uh, you can go and register for beta there. Uh, we also have some pre-order bundles available that uh, give you VIP beta access. So uh, hopefully in the next few weeks or so, we'll be making that, uh, getting those players in the game. And then when you make a purchase instantly in the game, it might even happen as soon as this week. Uh, you can also check out our forums. We have news articles. So Dragon's Profit the Game. Awesome. Awesome. And uh, I know you probably can't answer this, but is there a scheduled release date, a quarter that you're aiming for? That's a good prelude to that question. <laughs> no, I can't discuss that. Okay. And you know, and part of it is because we're really making use of closed beta. We want to yeah. make sure, our priority is make sure the game is fun and the game is ready before we release it. So, you know, obviously as soon as we can, but we don't want to do it before it's ready. Awesome. Cool. So, well, thanks for speaking to us. Keep in touch with us and we'll, we'll let you yeah. know as we get closer. Definitely. All right. Awesome. It was good speaking with you. Thank you. Yeah.